All right, we'll get started. So uh, someone requested that they wanted to see a walkthrough of uh, CBD related products. So we'll look at CBD benefits today. Let me start by sharing screen. So let's get started. I plugged in a keyword uh, called CBD benefits and this is an AI wizard. Let's get started. Generate title ideas. The use of CBD benefits, useful CBD benefits. In the AI wizard, everything is adjustable. So the suggestions that the AI is giving you, you can double click on this box and edit it. You can also add your own keyword. Let's say if you wanted to add a guide and you wanted to generate the title ideas again, you can. And in this, this time, it will try to include guide as well in it. So you can make those adjustments and select the title that is best suited for the use case that you're creating, I mean, for the content that you're creating and then click next. Okay, we already have some description here. Similarly, you can add some keywords and regenerate the meta description if you wanted to, then click next. Okay, let's generate some section concept. So what is section concepts? Section concepts is the core vitals of the content that it finds from ranking pages. So consider this, right? Like, so every time you write a blog, there is gonna be some introduction, there is gonna be some conclusion, but the middle section of your blog or your long form content or any content that you're creating, it's going to be the value, right? Like that's the core information that your users are looking for. So what section concepts does is that it will go and read through all the ranking pages uh, and their H2 and H3 tags, and then find those core vitals and extract the outline, make them more readable uh, for you. Okay, this is quite easy to read. What is CBD oil used for? Let's go ahead and add CBD extract benefits. Great. And physical treatment benefits, sure. This is okay, I've already got this. This I don't need. And then uh, there are some other intent questions. Okay, what is outline intent questions, right? Target character count, sure. But I mean, it doesn't really consume much characters when you are uh, doing title and description. That's why it's uh, deliberately left out, but yeah, why not? Okay, so what is outline intent question? Uh, outline intent question is the questions that the users are looking answer for when they're looking for in the content. So what it does is that when we're reading through this outlines, we tend to extract those key elements and find out what are the users really looking for when they are reading this content. So what they're really looking for is what is, how is CBD related with marijuana? How is CBD related with THC? What is CBD, right? Like, so this is something that you wanna add. Uh, what does CBD do? Like, like all is CBD harmful? Some of these questions like users are going to have, and there's like lots of CBD scams too. So there's plenty of things going around. And this is what is going to help you narrow down your research and make sure that you include things which answer some of this information. So if you have not included those, and if you don't find them here, you can always go to SERP outlines and identify some of those things and include them in your content. Oh, sounds good. I, I, I see what you mean. Yeah, that would be really useful. Okay, all right. So based upon best practices, right? Like 160 characters for the meta description, you can go a little longer. It's keeping all of that in mind, but yes, it would definitely be useful uh, to have a character count there. Okay, all right. So, okay. So you can add those outlines in here. You can also look at the Google path. So there's tons of questions over here. So you can potentially create an FAQ section. And let's drag this down. Open it up and you can start adding all of these questions that you want in it. So don't just blindly, uh, blindly add them. Uh, add them by carefully reading through them. But you can group them like this. Okay, all right, so we looked at how you would go about adding some of this outlines in here. Let's look at some quick controls too. So if you see a down arrow here, that means there is a hierarchy here. And if you click on all, it will add everything in the editor. If you click just this, it will add only that portion. If you want to see what's beneath that content, uh, you can click on this view icon. If there is an immediate paragraph, which has good content, you will see it right underneath it. There we go. So it, it's, it'll be easier for you to identify what you really want to add and what you don't want to add. Okay. 
let's look at this related keywords. Now, this is the most important part because outranking not just suggest you what keywords to use, but where to use them. And that is why using related keywords in your most important tags is absolutely essential for ranking or higher potential for ranking. So these keywords are mapped out to all of these content over here. So medical benefits of CBD, it's something that we have not talked about in our outline yet. So you can click on it and then scroll through the content to see if there is any information here that is related to that. And if it is, it will turn into an orange. So I would say medical benefits. So let's see physical treatment benefits. I could say physical treatment, right? So it could be medical benefits. Okay. And it turned green, right? So this is how you can use it to optimize some of the content and add content directly into your uh, outline builder. So let's look at a few other things and see if you can identify anything related to that. Nope. But see, if you click on this or, okay, there you go. So it's mentioning where CBD benefits is mentioned in uh, the H2 tags. You can see over here. So there's eight, eight to no facts, right? So if you click on it, it will tell you, okay, this are, this are some really good benefits out of it. And you want to include them in the benefits of CBD. So you see like how you create really powerful content is inclusive of everything that everyone is looking for. So I would look for things that I can add in here, this uh, particular section, even more in depth and talk about everything that SERP has talked about, uh, but in a better and more cohesive way. So this is how you can start building your outline. And you can also measure some highest frequency keyword data. The reason why you have this HFK, which means highest frequency keywords, what are they, right? Like they are words which are most frequently used in the H2 tags and the H3 tags of your SERPs outline. And the ones that have been repeated more than, uh, repeated, uh, more than five times are included over here. Why are we doing this? Is because let's say you were talking about CBD benefits, which has some related keywords. But if you were talking about CBD ointments, right? And CBD ointments probably have no keywords at all, related keywords at all in the SERP data. So how do you go about optimizing your content and making sure you have those key elements in it? That's when your highest frequency keyword data will come really in handy and will uh, help you create some content. So for example, we saw a case where we were talking about Realme laptop and it was uh, just a brand new laptop that they were just introduced today. Many people created content for it, but there's just not enough trend to find out all the keywords around it. So when you look for it, you will, this highest frequency keyword data could potentially include processor speed, hard disk, RAM, and stuff like that. So it'll be uh, easier for you to identify what are some of the frequently appearing information that people are talking about in their content and use that to create your outline. So you have, you're, you're like really nailing the user intent and all the things that the users are looking for. Okay. We have the content here. Now let's go ahead and add that directly into our sections and outline. So sections and outline here. So once you exit the AI wizard by clicking on that button, it will automatically build out this information for you. And if you are still a beginner, don't worry too much over here. People if, uh, often get uh, scared when they look at this and say like, oh, this is code snippet. This is not something that I can understand. Don't worry about it. This just means that this is your meta description and that's how Outranking is going to read it. And this is your URL. This is your H1 tag. And you can obviously change up your H1 tag according to however you want. So let's go ahead and just refresh the score a little bit. And you'll see that our title is good enough. Our heading is great. Our meta description could use a little bit of improvement. And we'll get to that, like how you can actually improve some of this statistics. Okay, we're here. And now we need to uh, start creating content uh, for our blog. Let's say if you're just creating a brief, right? Like it would this like uh, if, if you're creating a brief, I just copy all of these information in and you'd have a brief. You can also automate a brief and there are some other uh, features which can uh, help you automate some of this brief. But uh, for this particular demo, I'm going to show you how you can start creating content right away and get to that first draft really fast. Okay, uh, what is CBD oil used for? Let's create a uh, generate concept. So before we start generating concepts and getting into this ex writing exercise, let's understand some of the controls over here and uh, how they work. So summarize concepts, it will not work here unless you have at least one concept selected. And we don't have any concepts yet in this, this particular view because we've not generated any concepts yet. When you click on answer, let's go ahead and just uh, check real quick what it does. 
it will go ahead and answer that particular question in a format that we have noticed Google again and again showing the people also ask boxes and featured snippets. So we've taken those character counts, that sort of language and readability into account before generating this answer descriptions. Okay, let's go ahead and let's keep that over there right now. What is regenerate? Once you have generated concepts and you want to regenerate the concepts with a different template, you can do that. And there are many templates that are available for concepts and I'll show that as well. This will allow you to custom concepts over here. A custom concepts is basically anything that, like any talking points that you want to actually discuss within this content. So you could say, I mean, uh, you, you could say CBD oil uh, has heart benefits, for example, and it will expand upon that heart benefits when it's writing the content and not go very far off from that particular topic. So that's the whole purpose behind it. Let's go ahead and delete this and we can look at some of the templates first. Okay, so the current template that you, by default, when you click on uh, generate concepts, is default. What default means is that it can read almost every concepts out of that particular paragraph and extract that. So the, we're not gonna go very deep into what each of this do. If, if you wanna learn more uh, about what the, uh, what the templates do, then come to the Thursday's webinar where we go really deep in, and explore some of these options and actually create content using some of these concepts uh, methods. So for this particular example, we'll use default. And from the names of it, you can tell, right? Like this is going to extract sort of positive elements out of the content. This is going to convert the content that it reads into steps, a sort of a format. This is going to extract all the FAQs. This is going to just try to extract the introductory uh, introduction part from whatever content that it reads. This is going to extract all the disadvantages if there is any. This is going to extract information which is only related to your H2 or H3 tag that you are creating content around. And this is going to extract all the features from the content. So if you're using, if you're generating, like if you have product uh, information, it can extract features out of it. And just a second. I see a bunch of people joining in, so letting them in. Okay, all right. Let's go ahead, go ahead and generate, okay? It's tons of information, so it's doing its uh, work, reading through the content, and identifying any information that can be potentially used to build out your content. How does this really work, right? Like, where are, where are we getting this content from? This content is coming, so this is not copy page state content from wherever it reads it. It's actually extracting key elements and key phrases or the, the core vital of a particular paragraph or a sentence that can be used to build more context upon. So it's only extracting those kind of concepts, concepts out of the research that it finds from, from existing SERP data. So existing SERP data is all of your 20 pages. So these are the 20 pages which it reads and identifies the most relevant information and uh, extracts concepts from it. Okay, now once we have extracted concepts, you can start writing with it. Before we start writing the concepts, I want, let's explain some of the basic functionalities uh, before we uh, get deeper into it. So after I generated the concepts, you wanna read where did we got the content from, right? So you can click on the settings box and you will see all the information which we've read in order to extract those concepts from. So there's, you can backtrack it and understand how it is pulling out content. If it missed anything, you can add it, but most likely uh, it will stay on track and uh, extract everything that is important to that particular uh, subject. Okay, if you don't want to use this research, you can control A and delete it and then add your own custom research here as well. The limit over here is 1800 characters. So it's quite long. You can literally add like three or four paragraphs uh, in it. Uh, and uh, it will do its uh, magic and uh, return you concepts. Okay, let's click on uh, this right now and then uh, backtrack it. So you can use this to copy the H2 tag directly into the editor. You can use this to rewrite it if you want to, and it will just rewrite this particular heading. Then, okay, we don't wanna do that. What is TBD? We'll keep that. Okay, you can delete this particular section from here. You can minimize this. You can drag all of these options and people often uh, get confused. Like they're trying to drop it outside and it will not drop it. No, you need to drop it onto the element which you want to replace it with. So this is how you change the hierarchy of it. You can also expand it. And then let's see if there's anything in here. If you want to move this in from this to this, you can. 
Okay. Let's say you don't have any of these things and you want to move this in here. It will not move it because this is open. So it, it is not going to be draggable, right? So let's go ahead and minimize this. And then you can drag it in it, in it if you want to. Okay. Let's go ahead and close that and go back to our original example and start creating some content. Okay, now CBD has low affinity for cannabis, cannabinoid receptors in the brain. CBD is thought to influence some receptors, including opioid. And, okay, there's stuff that I have no idea about, but okay. Let's go ahead and select some of these concepts. And then you can click summarize. There we go. So it built out this content. And I'm not sure why it is. It should have just copied. Okay. Yeah. It's used a little differently. Okay. So it started writing out the paragraph based on some of the concept selection. So you can select up to four, you can select one, however you want. If the concepts look uh, good as is, and you just want to include them directly into your content, you can add that and create listicles, or it really depends on the, your writing style and what you're writing, but okay. And you can also delete this. Now let's say, what is this error? So this will allow you to convert this particular concept into an H2 tag or an H3 tag. So let's see how it works. I'll click on H2 and it just converted that particular thing into an H2 tag. So, okay. And if you convert this into an H3 tag, so let's go ahead and convert some of one of the small things here into an H3 tag. So we understand. Okay. So don't miss out our guides. Let's see when I convert this into an H3 and it converts right in here. And it will also keep the trail of information if there, there is any information in here uh, along with it. So you can keep generating concepts out of it. Okay, this was a quick introduction to how you could start creating content uh, for it. Now, let's say you have your first draft and you wanna go do other things. So we'll, we'll talk about that as well. So this, this covers the sections part. Now, let's go ahead and look at all the tabs starting from top, SEO score. Now, this is giving you some, some general statistics around the ranking content and uh, what's out there. Our suggestions based are, are mostly based on some of this key information that we find here. Don't think of this as, oh, it's red, so you know uh, I might be doing something wrong. It really depends on your use case and the comparison that we are putting in together. So this is the average count for uh, the words that we uh, read from SERP data. This is the maximum, the readability. This is your current readability. You can click refresh and it will tell you, okay, you're, you are at sixth grade right now. This is how many sentences your content is probably using from here to here. Okay, that just means my sentences are extremely wrong and I need to uh, cut them short, but because uh, to improve readability, the average amount of sentences used is 109, maximum is 628. And similarly, sections data, sections is your H2 and H3 tag, exact searches, which is uh, related keywords. Uh, what, are, what sort of related keywords they've used? So uh, someone has used 57 related keywords while others have uh, on an average it's 30. How many external links this content, I mean, the data from the SERP has, images, content format, whether you wanna create a pillar page or you wanna create a regular page. A regular page is like, if you're, if you're like targeting long form content, right? And you're targeting a long tail keyword, not long form content, long tail keyword. You can go away with regular and it will, it will score just proper. But let's say if you're like trying to create a pillar page, right? Pillar page is like, let's say content strategy. So you need to include things about content strategy, content marketing strategy, content strategy examples, right? Like there's many bigger keywords that build, build up that particular pillar page content. In that case, you can score it with more scrutiny uh, by clicking on pillar page. So now it will reduce your score and uh, score more harshly. So you'll have to do a lot more in order to uh, improve your score, uh, but you can still improve it 200. Okay, let's go to methods. Now in methods, this are, there are two types of methods. Malcolm, you, you're asking what outranking will do in the next release. Right now, what we have is a pillar page and regular page content. So uh, you can still use the same editor to create content for it, but we are scoring them only based on this right now. Press releases don't really need scoring. They almost never rank in Google. So I wouldn't even worry about this. It's different mechanisms for creating different kinds of web pages. And we'll get right now, we're focused on long form content, content for web, where like people really spend money in scale, right? Like on day-to-day -day basis, which is uh, long form content and uh, blog content. Okay. So let's go ahead and see like what sort of methods are there. There's two kinds of methods. You can create your own method or you can use a public method. 
So for like beginners, let's skip the part where you create your own methods. I'll walk through some of the public methods that we have. So there is an introduction with audience and tone of voice. There's introduction using keyword. There is IDEA, AIDA framework for products. Now, like this is for products as well. This is Neil Patel block style email. This is brilliant introduction. So this is created by us, right? So let's see what sort of introduction this will create. If I command it, it's going to ask me for a write a tone. Uh, like, please write a tone. So I will... Click here and add a tone as sarcastic. Okay. And you can just click outside and it will automatically save that. Okay. Now I can go here and say command and it will uh, build out an introduction. So it, it started building out an introduction, really good introduction, actually. You can even try that. It contains safe word. There we go. So uh, much more. So how do you like, so it's being sarcastic and it's really trying to be creative when it's creating your introduction. Now let's say you want to have an introduction, which is much more guided and kind of walks a user through a particular path, right? So what we've done is also created a BAB. No, let's go ahead and look at some, okay. This is a pass a blog introduction. This is not for products. So this is problem agitation and solution type introduction that lets the user dive deeper into your content. So it's a build with specific training data and let's see what it comes up with. It will ask us like, who's the audience, right? So audience is people with, let's say back pain or chronic pain. Okay. And I can command it and it will build out this particular Three, it'll build out three particular paragraphs in a very concise manner. And this can be a really solid introduction. So it's uh, talking about the pain, then it is agitating it, and then it is providing a solution. A solution is the user reading your content deeper, right? That's, that's, so it's like very custom made for a specific use case for creating this long form content and not like product, a product information. Similarly, you can use a BAP framework if you wanted to, and it will also ask uh, people pain command. And it will also before after bridge. So there's multiple ways you can start building out your introductions and getting started. And you can use methods for that. You can use methods for many things. So let's say if this is a YouTube content, I could just pick, let's pick up this uh, AppSumo product. I am not wasting my time. Uh, all right, let's toggle the, like you can copy this content out of here and you can also paste it in here. And there's a method which can let you convert this uh, YouTube video into a blog post. So let's say, all right, put a break here. You can select up to 1800 characters and it will uh, automatically start building out this. So let's go ahead and look at this, right? YouTube transcripts, there we go. So it started building out your content using the same uh, information. And then if you wanted to identify, okay, what heading do I put here? You can select this and come, There's there should be another public method. Okay, paragraph two heading and say command. And it will build out the title for this. So this is your title. You can use similar tactics to uh, come up with content at scale for almost uh, any kind of raw information that you find uh, online. Okay, perfect. So uh, there's uh, many methods that you can go through, translation methods and like all sorts of methods. You can also create your own method and we're not going to discuss this in detail, but uh, you can use some of the, the information given here to try and build out your own method. Okay, let's go to instructions. Now, once you have created your entire content and you start seeing your score improve, and then you can come here and start measuring the impact of your content for like potential for ranking. So uh, title, if it had the green check, you can skip and then come here and see, okay, CBD health benefits, CBD oil benefits, medical benefits of CBD. There's so many keywords that I can precisely be targeting in my title, right? Which I have not included here. So useful CBD benefits, I'd say useful CBD. Health, health benefits. Let's see. Okay. We got that. Oh, we got tick marks. So it at least wants a certain amount of uh, keywords used in it. So that's all the change that I wanted. I had to make, but if you wanted to make it more optimized, you can start including benefits. Uh, and you can see, you can talk about like CBD health and medical benefits, I guess. Don't make it like uh, so cramped up that it's not readable. I'm just using it for 
uh, this particular exercise, but I'd like my content to be much more readable. So I go for a little precise, but also a little optimized. Similarly, you can see that we have 160 characters. We've not like occupied all of it. So you can add some of the information in there, optimize it, move more onto it. And then you can see that we only add one section so far. So we only added like one H2. We need to at least get to 13. So as you start writing your content, some of the scores will improve and you will start seeing the, uh, the stick boxes on almost all of it. We've not used related keywords into our section. So all of these things, like, you know, once you have created your entire content, that's when you come here, look at the instructions and optimize your content for more reach. Title, this shows you the first 20 titles uh, from ranking pages and the highest frequency keyword data. Same goes for description. And you can rewrite this and copy this using this icon. Okay, this is headings. This is H1 tag and related highest frequency keyword data. This is sections. This is uh, something that we already looked at. Let's look at some of these other tabs as well. Sections from SERP covers each of the section, each uh, page from, from the SERP data. You can click on it and go to that particular URL if you wanted to. This is showing the position. And this can uh, this also shows you the information under it. So uh, there we go. And you can click next, next, next to go to browse through all of the pages if you wanted to. There's also that AI wizard where we uh, went through that search section. If you want more readability and more data on one page before you start building out your outlines, you can do that. You can also add anything that you missed out later on. Like if you wanted to add, like you can see it's added here. Highest frequency. So this is basically filtering of your outline based on highest frequency data. So let's say if I want to just select on benefits, what will happen. So these are all the benefit related uh, topics that people have talked about in their content. And so when I am like, so a psychotic treatment benefits, health benefits, health benefits being the center of it, and just uh, some of the other things. So if you are covering benefits, right, like I can break out my benefit section into physical treatment benefits, uh, psychotic treatment benefit, other health benefits, you know, and have a more powerful, more in-depth benefit related section for CBD. So, okay. You can use this to rearrange your sections. So if you, like, we don't have any sections right now. So let's see if I'll just add this in here and I'll bring all of these under. So we're going to say CBD oil. And once we come back to uh, this, okay. So there we have CBD oil. I can move entire sections and rearrange section and it will move CBD oil all the way top. And uh, the other thing came all the way bottom, right? So you can use this to easily organize your sections. Okay, a questions data. This is showing all the questions that the ranking pages have used in their content. Uh, they are as is, so you'll have to rewrite them. This is Google pack questions, and we bring out 20 questions that you can use from. This is keyword data. So if there's any questions that exact questions that the users are asking in Google or your audience is asking Google, you will see it over here. And this is any social related uh, data. So social is social is uh, Reddit uh, and Quora. Uh, if there's any uh, good information that we think uh, you should essentially include it, it will be pulled up over here as well. Okay, let's move to topic coverage. Now, topic coverage is essentially like, so a lot of you have been using other products and let's not name them. You've been using other products and you're like very used to following a particular pattern of what, what sort of topics to cover. Um, at out, like in OutRanking, we recommend this after the fact. Create the best outline. Make sure you use the right related keywords in those outlines. And then when you write content at the end of it, use this information to find out all the things that you might be missing. I would never, 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 like or at OutRanking, we never recommend how many times you should use a particular keyword in the content. If you have created the best content, it will naturally have what's required to rank. So don't do keyword stuffing. Don't use information in the wrong way. Uh, this is just to give you an, uh, an idea about some of this information that you need to include in your content. And if you need inspiration, you wanna find out, how do side effects are related? So you can click on this information and it will show you how people have used this particular key, uh, keyword, possible side effects, uh, benefits and side uh, effects of using CBD oil in, in, in competing web pages. And it can also show you partially used uh, and used keywords in your own content so you can optimize them as well. You can also see where they are used in paragraphs. So this will really help you do all the research and figure out all the information that you uh, need to include in your content.
Okay, let's look at uh, some of these other tabs before we look at the heat map clusters. So it has identified there's many clusters and these are all the clusters that we've used. And the one that you're using will automatically be highlighted in green. Keyword density. Keyword density is uh, particularly used for measuring the impact of your own content. So your own content only. This is making sure that you're not like overly using a certain keyword. Again, this is not the right way to go about creating content. This is more sort of a way for you to optimize it and uh, optimize it as in for keyword stuffing, just to kind of make sure that you're not done too much keyword stuffing for any of these things. And you can see if you're like above or in the red zone, uh, then you need to start rethinking. Maybe you can uh, scale down a little bit if you want to, uh, but look for those reds in a lot of keywords, then you have a problem. One or two focus keywords is not really a problem. Okay, let's look at the heat map. And the heat map will show you where are these keywords uh, being used in the ranking pages. So how they are using it. So if you see like treat, product, pain, people have used this in the H1 tag. Some of them have used it in other tags, right? So you can see where you are using it and where your competition is using it. Orange means could be related, could not be related, uh, but it could be an opportunity as well because not many people are using it. Strongly suggested and most important ones are the ones you really need to use if you wanna create a very, you, you wanna create content which is wholesome of user intent, okay? And you don't have to worry about a majority of these things when you write with concepts, we are influencing the AI to, forcefully use some of these keywords that we are finding from SERP data. So when you're like done writing the content, chances are that you most likely meet all of majority of the requirements, if not all of it. Okay, let's go to related keyword data. And similarly here, you this is all the related keywords. And these are the exact keywords that people are searching for in Google. They have volume for it, Com competition. The lower the competition, the higher are your chances for ranking. And you can see that there's a tick mark here. This means that it has been used in H tag. Now let's see how it would look like if it was used in content. It will show you a C if it was used in any paragraph or span tags. And if you need more inspiration, similarly, you can click on uh, the AI icon and it will go and identify all of that information, show you where and how your competition has used that particular uh, data. Okay. If you hover over this, uh, it will show you how many times this particular keyword has been mentioned in uh, the SERP data. If you click on this particular box, it should highlight it. Yeah, okay. You can also find out clusters. So let's say benefit clusters. And you can see all the keywords which have benefits in it. Similarly, you can use this for researching and a lot of other stuff as well. Okay, let's go ahead and look at research. Now, research is the top 20 pages of Google that we pulled out. You can add your own research pages, as many URLs as you want over here. And when you generate concepts, it will start reading those URLs as well. If you've added your own custom URLs, if you want to exclude a particular URL from all the uh, ranking factors, like this is, this is insane amount of backlinks uh, and words. Like, let's say for the, for example, you wanted to exclude this particular content from, uh, rank like from the data that we are suggesting you can click here and it will now exclude this particular matrix from being calculated in the search score as well as the recommendations not only that it will also exclude this from concepts being able to read it and this is a simple url suggestion that you can use to create your url now okay uh, a few other controls so we've looked at all the sidebar options now let's look at some of these options here. So you can use this particular thing to do a multi keyword research document. So CBD health benefits, if you just wanted to focus on CBD or another long tail keyword, which is like closely associated, but not in this particular group, you can add that particular keyword and click on search and it will do another search, but your document content will be the same. So you can use multiple keywords to do the research uh, and come up with really powerful content. We use uh, this mostly for uh, super pillar page uh, type of content. Okay, let's look at this. This will allow you to share your documents outside outside the team. So mind though, when you share document from whoever you have given the view or edit rights will not be able to use AI of whatsoever. If you want them to use AI, make sure you include them in your team member and not a shared document. So this is just uh, sharing the document for a quick review uh, with someone who's not really doing the writing or getting quick approvals for what you are trying to do. Okay. 
Let's go ahead and look at this now. This will take you back to home and we'll go back to home after this, but this, is, this will create a new document. This will save. Uh, there is an auto save every, every, it's between one and two minutes or depending on where your cursor is and your, some of your activities. So, and the logic is constantly improving, but if you really feel like saving the document, making sure it's saved, you can click here and it will show you, this will take you to history. It will show you AI writing history and your version histories as well. Uh, if you created more versions, uh, this is undo redo, and you can, uh, press control Z and control Y, which is what most people use. This will export this to a document. This uh, You can use this to import your own URL into the content and optimize the existing content as well. I'll get to all the questions, Larry. Just give me a second. I Let me finish this uh, side panel. This is content brief. This is something that most people have missed out on. So when you click on content brief, you can set some settings and say, okay, I don't want to include topics. I don't want to include SERP data, whatever you want to include and you can create a custom brief and it will uh, enter all the information in here and create a brief for you that you can then forward. So this is a scratch pad and this, this is also saving data, but it is adjacent to it. So you can come back to it if you want. If you wanted to just go back to content brief and it will show you the scratch pad again. You can also export this into a PDF and a Word document. Let's go ahead and close that. Uh, a concept builder. So if you wanted to do more research and besides the AI wizard, you can click here and it will open up the concept builder here. Now you can like navigate through different pages and uh, add stuff in here if you wanted to. These are some quick toolbar options, like pretty self-explanatory. Let's click on this. This will result into lower output. This will in medium and higher. This is 120 characters, double of that and triple of 120 is high. You can set a tone. If you don't want the AI to use uh, or read any of the information from above, just press like this. Not, it's, this is rarely required. Because, because we use concepts and how we, our approach to module writing is so different that in many, in most cases, this is not even required to look at. Okay. Here you can see your word count, character count, and st uh, sentence count. Let's go to home. We're nearing the end. So I'm going to uh, quickly go through some of the things. This will archive the content. This refresh will fetch the new content. So let's say your document is old and you want to rescore it after a few months, you can click on refresh and it will get the new data. Here you can share the document with your internal team members. So I've created something and I can share the document with my internal team members if I wanted to. And uh, this will result into SERP analysis. So let's go to SERP analysis. This is your history of SERP analysis. This is like very granular tracking of SERP data. And it's tons of information that you can see here. Most of this information is already used in our editor in some way or the other to influence your writing and optimization for your existing content. Uh, so you don't really need to come here unless you want to really deep dive into everything your competition is doing and how they are using the keywords and information like that. Okay, a question features, uh, very basic, like you can click on this and uh, see all the questions that you have created and sort through it. It's just a huge list of questions data that you can use. And this is keyword gap, it's still in beta, but you can see, you can compare any five domain that you have and uh, see what sort of content gap. This needs some refinement in the next version, but you can identify some of the keywords that your competition is ranking for and uh, things that you want to potentially rank for. Okay. Many people had the questions about the team settings. So let's go to teams. You can add a team member here. And then once the member has approved it, you can add a uh, number of documents that they are allowed to create in a given and how many characters uh, do you want to allocate them for, for them to be able to write content. After this, they will not be able to write with AI. And after this, they will not be able to create documents. Okay, this is your API setting. This is the key that you can use to connect your uh, outranking WordPress or Google Doc plugin. Just copy this and uh, enter it into the plugin and it will uh, fetch all the inform I mean, uh, fetch all the documents from your account. Okay, so this was, a okay, let's just go here as well. I'll show you like, okay, so this is a document limit, keyword research limit, characters limit, and uh, user limit. Okay, so like quickly, I went through the entire thing. Now let's go ahead and look at some questions. When I use outranking with Chrome on my laptop, there's no word count at the bottom of the page. Yes, and the reason is your screen is probably a little too small. So in order to uh, fit it, it's not able to fit it, so it's hiding it. You can press control negative. So let's say you go here and you press control negative, you'll start seeing it. So I'll show you an exa actual example of what's happening. So 
this is your current actual your browser is more sort of like this and that's why it's removing that it's just no space for it if you do a little minus then it will show you so uh, it depends on depends on the the screen it, it it hides and shows so i think this is the only thing that it's hiding besides that it's showing almost all information okay we still have 15 minutes so there's plenty of room for questions feel free to ask any questions you guys have you can unmute yourself and ask question as well i don't feel shy need help picking the correct plan what constitutes a document is a blog post the same as press release written how many words are allowed in a document okay so if you are it really depends on what plan you are uh, on right so i'm i'm thinking that you are not on the regular plan you are on uh, uh, the grandfather deal or the monthly subscription plan Okay, in that case, you don't really need to worry about the word count. You will most likely never exceed that word count that we've given on this particular plan. So you can write as much as you want. If if you like, if you're writing like a press release, right? Like, and you're creating a new document that will count as a new document. But currently, I don't think we really have really good capabilities as press releases. Once you have that, you'll have a a clear idea of what we defined as a, a document, and a lot of things will change in the next release. Up for dashboard and types of documents that you can create. Right now, we currently only have blog post type of documents and you can use this to create press release or any kind of document that you want. Uh, just make sure that you discard some of the things which are not essential. So for press release, SEO is of very little value. So I would not even consider some of these things, but sure, you can do some research. And for, yeah, for specific press release, we have some really good stuff coming in the next release. Hoping for in some time before, well, I think that's like a Christmas gift. <laughs> so sometime uh, near Christmas. Okay. More question, guys. Give it a few more minutes. No questions, really? <laughs> it's still being uh, planned out. We have a few things I can share. Oh, man. Uh, okay. So one of the thing is, uh, one of the things that we're bringing uh, is a site-wide scanning system that allows you to figure out which topics you can optimize or which pages you can optimize to create the most amount of ROI or traffic coming to your website in the least amount of effort. That's one. Uh, second is like a total dashboard redesign. We're going to have uh, ways for you to create multiple types of documents. And multiple types of documents, I mean, not just blog posts, right? There's going to be press releases. There's going to be research material that you can write. You'll be able to do a few other things too, which I don't want to reveal right now. And some major, major UX in hand. You're very welcome. Okay. Any other question, guys? If not, we're nearing the end of the time. One more minute. Okay. All right. So I, I, I guess that's all the questions you guys have. And I hope this was really useful. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to DM me or pose a question in the group and I'm happy to help you guys out. And uh, for those who are still getting started, don't miss out the next uh, next one. In the next uh, Thursdays, we'll have added a few more methods. And uh, I really want to show you guys how you can create uh, long form content using YouTube of videos, which is uh, the new source of content. Not many people have uh, used that content repurposes. So we want to really show you how you can repurpose uh, any YouTube video into a really good content piece. Sounds good. See you guys and talk to you later. Bye. Thank you.